So since Joe Biden has taken office, he's been inaugurated. He is now the next war criminal in chief. Uh, the media, the mainstream media, they've been salivating over him. Salivating, right? It's been one gigantic circle jerk. That's what it's been. Uh, I want to show you a couple of headlines, right? This is from the Financial Times. Democracy has prevailed. Wow. It's a bold statement. Democracy has prevailed. From the Scotsman. Democracy is precious. Democracy is fragile. In this hour, my friends, democracy has prevailed. So again, we're, we're, we're repeating this quote over here, aren't we? Washington Post, unity is the path. Remember, guys, you remember unity. You know, I got to put on my Rick James ring, right? The one that says unity. Unity. I don't know if you can see it. It's out of focus. It's a bit blinding. Kapow! <laughs> if you haven't seen Dave Chappelle's sketch on Rick James, then you go watch it. So we're seeing more unity. Daily Telegraph, end the Civil War. Mr. Gorbachev, bring down this wall. <laughs> um, this is from Metro. Now make America great again. Joe Biden is president. Now make America great again. You see, Blue MAGA. This is, this is what we're talking about, Blue MAGA. Same old, same old. It's just a handover from Team Red to Team Blue. It's the same, the same party, man. This is from the New York Times. Once again, <laughs> democracy has prevailed. Biden vows to mend the nation. You know, I have a suggestion about that. Maybe, just maybe, maybe you could mend the nation with some $2,000 checks or some sort of economic relief. Or, you know, a federal jobs program, given that you have so many people that are out of work, right? I don't know, something, right? If you're going to mend the nation. No, instead, it's a platitude diarrhea. That's what it is. Here, we have another one from the Daily Mirror. Look, a day of history, a day of hope. Uh, I'm never come with emotion ever. I, uh, I think I just might faint. Unity! This is wonderful. I'm, I'm loving... You know what I, what I, what I love to see? I love it when someone with a 50-year record in government of screwing over the working class, of being a warmonger, of being all types of a piece of shit, is unanimously celebrated by the fourth estate and the media, which is supposed to hold governments accountable. I love seeing that. I love it when they all agree on something, right? It really, it's really a testament to the free press of the United States. And you could argue... Most of Western Europe uh, and the Western Hemisphere, right? So here's another one from the Times. Look, it's time for unity. God, I'm just loving this buzzword, man. Unity all over the place. Let's unite in, in bombing other countries or something. Now, that's not all. That's not all. If you, if you thought this was cringy, if you thought that was bad, there's just a few examples. I, I, I couldn't stand it anymore. I was like, look, eight, eight examples is enough. We got more to cover. <laughs> uh, if, if you thought that was bad enough, look at what I'm about to show you, man. It's... <laughs> oh, God. Let's, let's just look at it, man. This is... Where is this from? MSNBC? Yeah. And you had our favorite war criminal, Karen, right? Nicole Wallace herself, who used to be the... Uh, White House communications director for none other than George Bush. The, yes, the same George Bush. George W. Bush. <laughs> Let's take a look at what they, have, what they have to say about Biden, okay? In humanity, to talk about diplomacy being back, it is all an implicit rebuke <laughs> of Donald Trump's foreign policy stewardship over the last four years. <laughs> That's right. And then just saying that they're going to do their jobs and um, be good stewards of America's role in this world and um, focus on American diplomacy. That in and of itself, um, being a rebuke of President Trump, is uh, underscores what we've been all been living through in the last four years, which is a president who wanted to be more isolationist. 
who wanted to pull back. Um, what we saw today, I, I, was, I was sitting in that room in Wilmington, um, I was thinking about the fact that Joe Biden, in some ways, first supporter, is fulfilling the promises that he made on the campaign trail. He said he wanted to have a cabinet that looked like America. And there were people there on that stage, of course, talking about all of their different accolades and their experience, but they were also talking about their families who survived the Holocaust, who survived coming from Cuba and fleeing communists, who talked about um, having gumbo diplomacy, cooking food, <laughs> cooking Southern food, as, as the mm -hmm. United Nations ambassador was saying. Um, all of those things are what America is yeah. about. It's just melting pot. The other thing I'll just say is I was talking to a Democrat who just said this also felt like the Avengers. It felt like we're being rescued from this, this <laughs> craziness that we've all lived through from the last four years. And now here are the superheroes to come and save us all. Shut the fuck up, man. God. <laughs> Gumbo diplomacy. It's more like gung ho diplomacy, right? The Avengers are back. Yeah, you know who the Avengers are? It's the <laughs> it's the the same old neocon gang. I can't I can't wait for their humanitarian endeavors, you know? It's so diplomatic when you walk into the General Assembly or the United Nations Security Council and uh, advocate for murdering people with sanctions. It's so diplomatic. I love that. I think it's it's the fundamental, it's a core pillar of uh, promoting cooperation and uh really cementing america's role you see i can i can do it too i can also bullshit <laughs> what the fuck was that what, what was it? did you hear a single thing in there that made any any sense like they, they have they have nothing good to say about biden that they're talking about <laughs> what C cooking what the fuck does that have to do with anything i mean look i'm not gonna lie you know if you if you gave me some you know Free food is, is free food. Awesome. But uh, that has nothing to do with Joe Biden, uh, his cabinet, which is just packed with warmongers. And uh, he's not going to be promoting peace in the world. And I, I have no clue what this is. Just a diarrhea salad. A true diarrhea salad. We're not done. We're not done. And do you see how there's no pushback? There's four people on this fucking panel right now. Well, th three besides her, right? Three fucking people. Not one of them is like, hey, I... I I think you're full of shit. <laughs> Not one of them. It's just like, oh yes, I totally agree. Yes, I, I am in I am in awe at how majestic Joe Biden is, and I would like to kiss his buttocks. What the fuck? And they talk about state media in other countries. What do you call this? Bunch of zombies. Oh yes, Joe Biden. Yes. Oh yes. By oh yes. Diversity, unity, unity. Let me show you the next one. It, it, we're, we're not done, huh? <laughs> we're not done. This from also from uh, MSNBC. Um, who's this dude? Heilemann. Okay. T take a listen to what he has to say. The thing that was, to me, so striking about today was that kind of comforting sense, even with the masks, even with the distancing, even without the crowd, you know, those shots inside Statuary Hall that we're familiar with, you know, from every inauguration, the, the, the sight of uh, the Clintons and the Bushes and the Obamas, you know, the, the Avengers, you know, sort of the <laughs> Marvel superheroes oh. back up there together. Oh. Oh. The Clintons, the Obamas, the Avengers, oh, the, the Bushes. The Bushes are here to fucking save us. Can you believe this guy? Can you, did, did you fucking hear that shit? Uh, the Clintons and the Bushes and the Obamas, you know, the, the Avengers, you know, sort of the <laughs> Marvel superheroes back up there together all in one place well, with their friend Joe Biden. All of them, I think, <laughs> feeling like that, that all of them sharing that same view that a lot of Americans had, which is that, you know, we did narrowly avert catastrophe in America and that they were all there to kind of, you know, kind of to buttress their buddy Joe Biden and see him in some ways as the as the natural and necessary corrective to what's been going on. And I think the things, you know, you said soaring a second ago about the speech. I agree. There was a lot about the speech. It was soaring. It may have been the best speech Joe Biden's ever given. It was certainly, I, I would argue, the most important in the sense that it was not a political speech at all. It was a speech that had a much higher purpose than that. And I don't want to go overboard and compare it to Lincoln's second inaugural, but aspirationally, that's where it wanted to live. But the thing about the speech that struck me most, and I think is most important. Are you, did you hear this guy? I mean, look, in all honesty, I, I think this is insulting. You're comparing him to Lincoln? No, no, that's ridiculous. But, I mean, clearly Joe Biden 
has the oratory skills and 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 inspires people to the degree of of Jesus and Moses. I think you're being way too way too restrictive in your comparison. Lincoln? No, no, Jesus, Moses. Why, why don't you compare him to a Messiah as well? Because you're not doing Joe Biden justice here. I don't. I don't think you're kissing his ass hard enough. This is completely unacceptable. You are a traitor, and I. And he works for Russia. I'm telling you, this guy probably works for Russia. <laughs> oh my God! And they talk about fucking uh, other countries having state media. W what is the difference between this and going? Yes, the great leader made such an inspiring speech. The entire nation fell on their knees and were starstruck by the halo around his head. Uh, the light was so blinding that he inspired generations for a thousand years. Joe Biden is the best president in the history of this nation. Oh my God. Oh my God. And he, com again, this is fucking Avengers comparison. Look, man, I'm going to be, I'm going to be straight up with you. I hate superhero movies to begin with. No offense. If you like that, good for you. Me, I'm more of a, you know, Scorsese, Tarantino, uh, you know, Alfred Hitchcock kind of guy. That's, that's, that's my stuff. I don't like superhero movies, the modern ones, the Marvel crap, especially. And, 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 I mean, regardless, that's that's besides the point. He's comparing George Bush <laughs> to a fucking superhero. And look, oh, he, we averted disaster. Yes, it, Trump was clearly the root of all evil. You know, before January uh, 2017, there was no such thing as uh, economic hardship in the United States. There was no such thing as a war in Iraq or Afghanistan or, or Syria or uh, sanctions killing people in Iran. There was none of that. Or, you know, this is all Donald Trump's fault. And, you know, if, if Joe Biden had not come along and said, go, you know the thing, well, then the world would have exploded. Thank God he's here. And George Bush as well. No, we're not done. Here, Glenn, post, Glenn, <laughs> Glenn shared this. One. He said, not even North Korean TV would say this. Just listen. Oh, God still some uh, tinkering going on with the inaugural address, but his aides are, are, have made really clear it's not like he's trying to ignore or paper over uh, either what happened at the Capitol two weeks ago or what we've been through uh, throughout four years of the Trump presidency. And the contrast on display tonight was so stark. I mean, those lights that are that are just shooting out from the Lincoln Memorial uh, along the reflecting pool, it, I look, it's like almost... Uh, extensions of Joe Biden's arms embracing oh. America. It was a moment where the new president came to town and sort of convened the country in this moment of remembrance, uh, outstretching his arms. And contrast that with that video you just saw of a disgraced president on his way out at his lowest point uh, in his presidency at the very end here uh, by himself uh, fighting for uh, his political movement to live on and not even necessarily promising uh, that he's going to be leading that movement, uh, you noted in, in his remarks tonight. I, I just think that sort of isolated. Uh Hold on a second, man. Did, did somebody did somebody say something about Joe Biden stretching out his arms? I could have sworn that's what I heard. This is just what the what the world needs right now. We need Joe Biden stretching out his arms, right? <laughs> ah, you people are fucking nuts. Oh, you people are fucking nuts. They're really something else, man. They're really something else. And then they have the stones to go and talk about other countries. Like, oh, look at these Arabs, these these brownies over here, and these Africans and. And uh, the Russians, yes, and the North Koreans have bought. They seem to have a little spot of cult of personality, yes. They they seem to be obsessed with their leaders. I think we must come in and change them, boy. What the? F if that is not a cult of personality, I don't know what is. Look at this whitewashing. Look at this <laughs> bullshit. It's really bad too. It's it's like you know if you 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 really didn't have to pick that analogy, especially when Joe Biden loves doing this with his arms, right? No, no, we're not. We're not having that. I, I think that's the last. That's probably the worst thing you could have picked. <laughs> no, just just no, no, no.
I, I posted something like, you know, if, if, if Biden dropped white phosphorus on the crowd, you could have you would see Brian Williams saying that it's oh, it's so it's like doves of freedom are falling from the sky. <laughs> he said something similar when when Trump attacked Syria in uh, 2018. He was like something about the beauty of our weapons or something, you know, just. Uh, this is disgusting. I mean, this is not journalism. Th this is bullshit. Did you hear a single policy? Like, just one policy. You know, if, if you wanted to do this, you could say, like, oh, finally, millions of Americans, every American is going to be covered with uh, universal health care now. And so many people, are, are their lives are going to be saved and bettered. Joe Biden is healing the nation. That would make fucking sense, right? And it works as an analogy. But, of course, he's not doing that. And uh, he will never do that because he's a corporate hack. And even then, you should probably refrain from salivating over politicians, regardless. But it, it's, he doesn't give you anything. What are you doing? Th this is all part of the, let's go back to brunch. Let's go back to sleep, right? Oh, look, he's, he's reaching around and he's healing the nation. Can't you see? Joe Biden is here. Daddy, Uncle Joe is here. <laughs> Fuck you. You weird motherfuckers. No, we are not having it. We are not having that, okay? Christ, they are, they're, they're like slobbering all over him, like a bunch of, like a bunch of goddamn dogs, man. It, it, it's just so revolting. And I wish, I wish it were just like these two isolated incidents. I showed you all of these headlines, right? <laughs> this is embarrassing. This is just, ugh. And you can see it's not just in the U.S., right? Christ almighty. And they have the nerve to talk about uh, Sy Syrian state media or Iranian state media or North Korean state media. Dude, I can tell you something. It would be every authoritarian or every uh, dictator's wet dream to have an American media at their disposal because of the power of brainwashing and propagandization that they are capable of enacting. That, that, that is how... how uh, how evil and powerful American media is. And I'm, I'm actually paraphrasing a quote by someone. I can't remember who said this, but uh, uh, that's, that's uh, something along the lines of, you know, um, being jealous of having the same kind of media apparatus the U.S. does. Just, oh, look, Blue MAGA. Here we go. Get ready, guys. Get ready. Everything is okay. Orange Cheetah Man is gone. Go back to sleep. Shh. It's okay. It's okay. I'll keep bombing them. You go back to sleep. Don't worry. Don't worry about a thing. It's okay. Uncle Joe is here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I'm so sick of these people. I really am. I'm so sick of them. I, I, I hate them. <laughs> go away. Oh, hold on. I got to close out the music tabs before that comes on by, by accident. Um... God, 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 God almighty. We have 312 people watching. But only 232 likes. Something is off. Okay, I, I need you guys to, to hit the like button, throw a shoe at it, drone strike it, sanction it. Do whatever you need to do. Get it done. I'm counting on you. And if you have not participated in the roll call, I, I said roll call. So type here. Make sure that you're here. Uh, I want to see you and I want to make sure that everyone is participating as we move on to our next segment of Biden's Rainbow Coalition death cult, right? Uncle Joe's Rainbow Coalition death cult. Someone asked me if I coined that. Yes, I did. <laughs> I, think, I think it's quite fitting. If, if I may say so. If I, if I, can, if I, can, please, if I can please gloat for, over that one thing. Because this is really a death cult. I mean, you just l listen to them. Oh, the great leader. The supreme leader of the United States of freedom and democracy and the greatest nation on earth. He's finally taken over from Orange Cheeto Man. Everything's good. So... Um, Moving on to our next segment. Are you ready for more? You're not ready for <laughs> You're not ready. <laughs> We're just getting started. <laughs> I don't know how many of you are new subscribers, but uh, in the past, we've done seven hour, eight, eight, nine hour live streams. Shit, man, this is, this is my thing. You know, this is me and my element. Um, looking at war criminals, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. I'm going to sip my water. And in the meantime, I, I kindly encourage you and i implore you to please support the show thank you very much I, again i don't like plugging the show I, i'm here to talk about politics so 
just support the show, bitch. Just whatever, man. It's on the screen. I, I do. I need to say anything else? Like there you go. I mean, I I think I made the case for independent media and how important that is. Unless, look, man, it's your choice. You, I mean, you, I'm being frank here. You can support independent media, or you can go back and listen to to that stuff to Nicole Wallace <laughs> and MSNBC. We don't have a choice here. We we really don't have a choice. This is what we're faced with. Okay, so you know, if there was no indie media, what would we do? We would be screwed. All right, all right, all right, all right. So this next, um, this next one. Oh boy. Again, I'm putting all the links in the chat and the description, whatever. So we have a Patreon, a PayPal, everything is there, and I th and I thank you very much. I really do. And by the way, I will get to these super chats if you've sent in a donation on PayPal or. YouTube Super Chat, I'll get to them at the end, okay? So, let's go, man. Let's go to the next one. Um, right. Yeah, th th this is... Okay. <clears throat> 